Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Tower of Guns. Uh, this is a shooter robot, which I love. Easy carrots pistol. Standard issue, choose a better gun. A portable pizza oven. And there's a bunch of other ones. Uh, we can either triple jump or we can do the falling down. So, uh... Yeah, I ran this for like five minutes. I ran this for like five minutes just to see if it works. A gamer, thanks for buying Power of Guns. You, a skilled aficionado of fun gaming. Hi, game. Do your best to try not to get killed. Ah, bug bots. Harmless, but Joe's wife made it uh, help keep him in. Sorry, I'm trying to doom and read. There was a reason that whenever Doom made you read something, it was during a loading screen. And specifically, between levels. So, I'm not going to say that this is a, you know, Borderlands like or anything, but the art assets do remind one of it. So, um, I was recently playing a, a first-person roguelike, which has a art style I think I would describe as, like, psychotic. Uh, it's definitely, like, weird, maybe for the same thing here. And it most reminds me of, like, Hot Line Man. Describe this thing as being like a. Oh. Whoops. I have died. Yeah, I played for five minutes just to die uh, earlier. These loading screens are maybe the best part of the game, honestly. The Tower Butler. To help you with your first tog runs. Only the best for you, my dear patron. 
Oh, this is kind of a cheat. But sometimes you can do this thing where uh, drops will be randomized. But the room will not. I don't like that. I don't really think that that counts. I say I never understand the video game. This feels very 2010. Um, okay, yeah, and then this is a different room. So it looks like they have a bunch of pre frap rooms that just go in. That's okay, that's okay. Sometimes you'll get, uh, quote-unquote roguelikes where, like, the build is the same. Seems like you got yourself stuck down there. Trying to get out. By tilting your way out, might be one that's the same button. Why not just build it so that I can get out of it? By cute dodging and timing, I was able to duck in front of that thing. Yeah, pretty much like a boomer theater, although I don't know if I would say that it is. I don't know if it's fast enough. Yeah, I guess the only thing is just to hold C. Why is it tilt? Like a pinball machine? You guys know about pinball machines? Blue gem block for your weapon. You don't say. When you get hurt, your weapon downgrades. Be careful. It looks like these are all prefab rooms that are then put in different orders. Because there's the big obvious swap point of. Oh. You know, the start and end point of anything is, is going to be, you know, the, the room doors. So then you can just be like, okay, that's always and forever the changeover. You have a big, obvious swap in a... And then it looks like enemy placements will also be confused. Because yeah, I think Let It Die does not actually randomize itself. Um, Dr. Turret. This is a very 2010 bad game. On consolation charger. Let's hit that menu, huh? Rewarding all styles of play. Funny. Okay. Let's give that a shot then, huh? This is definitely like a 7 out of 10. Okay, scattered shot. Kind of like a shotgun. Colossal passage description. Oh, he's like doing a DNA. Oh no, it's a, um, sword. Yeah. I don't like this I had this weird, like, uh, I don't know if I would call it like a hyperfixation, but like, as a, as a early teenager, I was obsessed with, like, learning about video games and actually, like, sticking in and doing the work and doing the history and going back and seeing what the start was. And so, like, even though I had access to better Mario games to play, I would insist on going back and playing Mario Brothers 1. Let me... Okay, cool. Looks like my audio's fine. 
I would insist on going back and playing Mario Brothers 1. And Super Mario Brothers, which is actually a game. Um, and I actually, like, I owned a NES, even though that was after my, you know, era. I bought a SNES as well. Um, and that's part of why I'm interested in, in uh, the original Rogue. Like, when I actually first started doing this, it was two years ago now, Jesus, two and a half, wow! But yeah, on the channel, when I first started playing, when I first started running Friday Night with Likes, the one I started with was the actual original Rogue. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to see, like, the honest, legitimate start. And then I wanted them to see Moria and Aang. Aang's hand. Uh, and then I think the first, like, roguelike that I played that is not a true... Because the thing is that roguelikes are called that because they are like rogue, literally. And so, if you have a pal set, or if you have a... If you have a tattle set, or if you don't use uh, people controls, or if you use the fucking D-pad, then a lot of people argue that those should be rogue lights. Which I think is a little silly. Because, you know, every other video game is allowed to evolve. I wrote a paper on this, actually. But, like... Every other video game has been allowed to evolve and grow past what it, you know, was in the 1980s. And, like, we don't say, oh, that's not Mario, that's a Mario Lite. That's not a Mario. Because, you know, it's in HD now and, you know, it runs in, uh, in 60 and it, you know, has a new controller. For whatever reason, roguelikes, you know, people insist on them remaining as, you know, ASCII. Uh, uh, art and ASCII games. You know, the sort of thing that you can print with a dot matrix. Stuff that you would describe as a terminal is what could run it. You know, the Wild West of computer stuff, the 1980s. When people were starting to get home computers and that wasn't like a crazy idea. on this. I also, another thing I mentioned in the paper was, um, I think, uh, I'm forgetting the term, sorry. It's like set creep or something. Feature creep, I think. This is that thing that's killing, um, Gundary Sim and a few other games. Because indie developers are like, oh man, you know what's cool? Putting realism or features in my game. And then like, they sacrifice, if there's one guy, then they're sacrificing developmental time. In order to focus on something silly that they want. And I described the hypothetical roguelike where, um, somebody codes into the game. And then, well, in order to, uh, allow the player to experience the true weak experience, Longhorn. Oh, it's a bullpen boss. I'm just trading with him. I can't seem to get out of his way. I can't even be closer. Yep. <laughs> um. I described a, a a hypothetical game wherein they put in uh you know, wheat, and then they needed to code a whole system wherein you could be, you could have a day-night cycle so that you, what the? This is Cake Town. I've counted up your wins and losses. It looks like this is your fifth run. Joe, developer of Tower of Guns. This is a point where people could do with a bit of a surprise. Use these gifts to help you have a good fifth run. Okay, cool. 